here's the secondary version of the same idea. Born of a visit to my son's high school one day. My son had been telling me great things about his U.S. history teacher. And my son is the classic example of a student who does better for a teacher he likes. So he's telling me all about the U.S. history teacher. I thought, I'm going to go see that guy. So I had a day off. I was home. The high school was like right down through the neighborhood, a couple blocks away. So I go out to campus, sign in, walk into the class, middle of the class. You know, I don't know what I was thinking, but I just walked in. I mean, what the heck? I, I pop in. And it was just instantly awkward. I step in. They're kind of out there working. He's over here to my left at his desk with a bunch of kids waiting to see him. And he looks up and goes, can I help you, sir? And I'm going, hey, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've heard great things about you as a teacher. And I'm a teacher myself, and my son goes to the school. And I just want to say thanks. I think it's really great that, that they see you that way. So keep up the good work. So now I'm walking home. And this scene is running through my head. And I wasn't pleased with it. I thought there could be a better way to go. When I was in fourth grade, we had a career fair. My teacher said, everyone gets five minutes to pitch what you want to be when you grow up. And in fourth grade, I knew I wanted to be an efficiency expert. I thought that'd be the perfect job for me. So I'm walking home now, running through my head, and I'm going, you know what? Everyone from Calvin on back is wasting his time. Why are we standing in line? This is not the DMV. This is U.S. history. Because <laughs> here's the harsh reality. If you allow kids to stand in line doing nothing, the message you send is your best is not needed in this room. We let kids stand around doing nothing. If your room is in any way disorganized, it sends the same message. We're not trying very hard in here. Look around. So what do you say to those guys? Go do what you can do. I only want two students here. The student I'm going to talk to. And I want somebody else kind of nearby so I don't have to wait for someone to come all the way across the room. But I don't want Brittany that close. Adam might finally trust me enough to share something personal, which he wouldn't do with Brittany breathing over his shoulder. So let's back her up a bit. And she's on deck. So I'm talking to Adam. And while I'm talking to Adam, Calvin comes by my desk, just puts a post with his name on it. That's it. And goes back to his seat. And when I finish with Adam, I give him Calvin's post-it. Hey, you want to deliver that to Calvin? Oh, sure, Mr. Morris. Thanks, buddy. And now Brittany's coming over right away. So I'm not having to wait for somebody. Calvin's on deck. Now I'm talking to Brittany. More names appear. All right. What I'm saying is this. That, I feel, is better than that. Well, that wraps up the Final Talk playlist. Hope you enjoyed all 20 episodes. Just remember, though, one idea at a time. Don't want to rush out a bunch of new ideas. It'll kind of overwhelm your students. Might overwhelm you. One at a time. And then be patient as students slowly but surely embrace the new idea as it becomes a part of your classroom culture. Coming up next, brand new playlist on how to use music in your classroom. Music used the right way will transform your room can't wait to share those ideas with you. Thanks for watching.